Hallo Cutting Edge, we zitten hier samen met Claudio van Coide en Cambria in de backstage van de VK. En Claudio, die ruikt ontzettend goed. Claudio, you smell great, because you just had a massage. Oh, yeah. You smell that? <laughs> It was good, dude. Uh, well, well deserved, I think. You know, a bit sore, you know, this first time back in, uh, in a while, so, so my body's not used to it and it needs some adjusting, so. Is the weather here too cold for you? No, I'm from New York, so it's kind of the... How do you keep on making loud, epic rock music sound so poppy it even embarrasses ABBA? <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, well, I, I mean, I guess it just has a lot to do with with my influence, and you know, I'm very much a fan of longer songs, songs that tell a story, and and I'm a big fan of melody. So, um, you know, I guess it's just kind of a uh, a marriage of the two things, and, and, and so you have Coed and Cambria. So. You've just released your fourth album. Is, is this the best thing you've done so far? This album? Um, I like to think so. Um, you know, certainly as a band we've progressed, and, and uh, also, I mean, you know, just for the trials that we had endured, um, you know, to make this record, you know, with losing half of the band and, and stuff like that, uh, you, you know, I, I think the hurdles were enough, you know, and and, uh, and overcoming them was, you know, was just a, a very big thing for us. And I think, you know, that this record documents all that stuff and, and therefore it is our, our, our best work. I think, you know. Like you said, you, you lost half the band during the writing process of, of this album and therefore in the studio you, you ended up with Taylor Hawkins doing the drumming. How does someone end up with Taylor Hawkins? Um, well, unfortunately, you know, uh, when we were about to go into the studio, we found out Chris couldn't perform on the album due to a uh, prior contractual agreement. And uh, and Nick Raskolinix, who was our producer, actually suggested Taylor because um, he had a very good, uh, very strong relationship with the Foo Fighters. And, and, uh, and it just worked out in the end. I mean, Taylor was a great personality and a beautiful drummer. And... and and, and, and we had a lot of fun with him, you know, so, um, you know, we were very fortunate. You know, we could have been in a, in, in a worse position, you know, I mean, it, it was, but it was great, it was great. You get inspiration from a story you've written yourself and thus every time you want to make a new record you also have to add another chapter to the story of Coed and Cambria. Yeah well I mean I think it can go on forever I mean I mean yes you know we that we are a concept band and, and a lot of these albums are you know they are chapters in this overall saga but a lot of it kind of comes from a very personal place you know um, so I mean, I mean, we could continue doing it to the, you know, to the end of our our time, you know. Um, but uh, but I don't know. I mean, No World for Tomorrow is the end of of the Amory Wars, the saga, you know, of Coed and Cambria. Um, so I mean, the next rec record, the idea is to uh, is to do a prequel album where we revisit the characters of Coed and Cambria and tell of their true origins. And so um, so we'll see. You got two new members on board right now, and if if you want to become a member of Coed and Cambria, do you have to read all the Coed and Cambria comics, and do you have to know them by heart before you can even get to play the drums, for example? Yes, Chris had to uh, read all of the co no <laughs> no uh, uh, you don't you don't have to get into the concept to be a member of Coed and Cambria. <laughs> To ask you just one other question about comics and comic books, um, you're in Brussels today, and Brussels is really known for its comic book culture. We have we have buildings painted with comic book figures. We have a comic book uh, museum. We have about a hundred comic bookshops. So my question is, you're in Brussels today. Have you enjoyed the city? Have you noticed anything of 
being in this city today? You know, unfortunately, um, I haven't had a chance to go anywhere. Um, I've been kind of glued to my laptop working, you know, the past uh, few weeks. Um, oh, this past week, this first you know, week of this tour. So I haven't really had a chance to explore anywhere. You know, it's just kind of sitting on my computer working on scripts, uh, you know, contacting management and just going over, you know, you know, releases of the year and, and stuff like that. So I haven't really had a time, to, uh, a moment to myself to, to say so. Unfortunately, no. But you get a good massage every day before you get on stage? That, no, not every day. Just today. Um, you know, that I, that I needed to do because my back is killing me. <laughs> okay, so I think that's a nice way of rounding up this interview. Thank you for talking to us.